Nickelodeon only wanted six episodes when they first ordered SpongeBob SquarePants. Six episodes! Boy, things changed quickly. Now this porous grill master with a knack for shenanigans dominates the afternoon time slots. They've been making this show for over 15 years, with more than three movies. All that fame means copycats and dreamers. Here's the reality. SpongeBob is like a black hole. Every show placed next to it in the schedule is going to be affected. Moreover, the competitive brands are constantly forced to respond to its popularity. All things go through SpongeBob. And we have the facts to prove it. For those unfamiliar, Loud House is about middle child Lincoln Loud and his ten sisters. Chaos obviously abounds in a house full of that many young people, and it's up to Lincoln to navigate it all. The fourth wall breaks, witty storylines with heavy banter, and a whole cast of memorable characters, Loud House has it all. It just also has rough scheduling. Fans of the show noticed early on that the show was being sandwiched between episodes of SpongeBob. Again, that's not surprising since the show is on 24-7. Regardless, it's hard to maintain a sense of independence and growth bumping up next to the big dog. Comparisons between the two shows ran wild, which makes sense. The kind of bait-and-switch, quick-paced story that Loud House tells isn't so different from many SpongeBob episodes. The characters vary more than in SpongeBob, and the humor is different, but you can't help but line the two up. Lucky for Loud House, a movie on Netflix is going to be their saving grace. There's no way to air SpongeBob right before that. Have you ever watched a show that you think you'll hate, then appears to reinvent the wheel? For us, that show has to be Teen Titans Go. When viewers heard their beloved show was being turned into a bright, happy-go-lucky version of the product, they lost their minds. People cursed the name of Cartoon Network and questioned their sanity. What kind of place is this? Don't worry, Patrick. It worked out. Teen Titans Go refreshed the characters and lightened them up. However, it's clear that a lot of the new humor and zany personalities stemmed from the SpongeBob branch. Let's be real, the never-ending parade of random jokes and offbeat humor comes directly from the nautical depths of Nick's one true show. Every scene and all the quick movements is to get you to the next punchline. Compare the first SpongeBob movie to the first Teen Titans Go movie. You'll find too many similarities for comfort. Don't get all knotted up over this. At least the show is a success for Cartoon Network. Some great DC characters live on thanks to the adopted style. For many of you, this is the first show on the list that may seem a bit forgettable. We don't blame you for that assumption. Honestly, Pig Goat Banana Cricket suffered from a bit of sameness. The animation style, the setting, and even the characters all felt too similar to something else. You have to stand out enough to make a claim, and this show didn't have the legs to be a mainstay on Nickelodeon. It's rude, but it's true. What does SpongeBob have to do with this? Well, as per usual, there's the scheduling issues. Mr. SquarePants tends to soak up a lot of airtime and still gets excellent ratings. It makes it hard to justify a show next to it. However, none of this is to say the show is a complete flop. It's done some stuff right. The characters are entertaining, and honestly tend to be compared to certain SpongeBob characters from time to time. Perhaps this second chance on Nicktoons will give Pig Goat Banana Cricket fresh air. They just need to find a better way to separate themselves. Bunsen is a Beast is the latest attempt by Butch Hartman to unseat SpongeBob SquarePants as the king. Hartman, for those in the dark, is probably best known for his show The Fairly Odd Parents, which actually beat SpongeBob in the ratings briefly. It seems he learned his lesson as Bunsen is a Beast more closely resembles the SpongeBob SquarePants mold. Bunsen is a creature attending a school that is finally opening itself up to monsters. He's an optimistic character with a lot in common with our poorest friend. Even the duo of Mikey and Bunsen closely resembles Patrick and SpongeBob's dynamic. It's clear now that Hartman is chasing the white whale of his life and trying to mimic its success. However, this isn't a total ripoff. Just the friend dynamic feels similar, but it's a big reason for Bunsen's early success. The show didn't show enough promise, though. Hartman announced that it was canceled and ultimately left Nickelodeon. The Mad King SquarePants had won. Bunsen is a Beast appears to be the last challenge by this fantastic animation team, which is truly heartbreaking. We promise we're going through this as fast as we can, but there's just so many shows to mention. Like, how can we not talk about the marvelous misadventures of Flapjack? Cartoon Network had found its golden goose. Finally, there was an answer to SpongeBob in their minds. 
See, when you put it that way, the comparisons just write themselves. Observe. Notice the animation style. While not precisely on point with SpongeBob, it's pretty darn close. The tone and general setting feels like the port city right above Bikini Bottom. Even the humor isn't far off base. Both shows feature some occasional adult humor focused through the lens of the innocent and naive main character. The parts of Flapjack that endeared it to audiences are also the parts most closely tied to their spongy overlord. That's just the facts. Of course, Flapjack did something with all of this. It wasn't a floor-to-ceiling ripoff. The stories and the world-building helped separate the show. As the seasons went by, it became clear that this series was starting a revolution at Cartoon Network. Years from now, whatever social media platform is prevalent will be overrun with Adventure Time memes, just like SpongeBob now. The two shows exude the same energy and feast off the enthusiasm of a wide fanbase. If you're a fan of either show, then you know precisely why Adventure Time is on the list. Hint, it's not just because Finn and Jake are so perfect. Turns out one of the creative directors, Nate Cash, is also a creative director on SpongeBob. There are a few more crossovers on the crew, but we don't have the time to go over them all. This fact might help explain why both shows connect well with both adults and kids. They brought in some people with experience on that front to assist in the creation. Luckily for Adventure Time, the characters and stories still feel unique. You wouldn't know without being told that some of the SpongeBob crew worked on Adventure Time. That ability to stand out is what made Adventure Time a huge success. Heck, they even got a four-part special on HBO. That doesn't just happen. For a while there, it looked like Sanjay and Craig could stand the test of time and succeeded where others failed. Sadly, that dream didn't work out. Turns out a boy and his talking snake just didn't make for compelling enough television. The ingredients were there for everything to work out. Sometimes they don't come together at the right time. It's definitely a shame this show missed the window. However, this video is about shows with fame, and Sanjay and Craig earned some early praise and fandom. However, a massive part of that was its devotion to kids are kids humor. The showrunners didn't hide from potty jokes and silly things that get on parents' nerves. All this was carried by the titular characters that probably best recreated the dynamic between SpongeBob and Patrick on screen. Most parents regulate what their kids watch, so potty humor just won't cut it. Shows today need to appeal to parents in some way to be tolerable. Sanjay and Craig never found that groove, and it was undoubtedly a contributing factor when the show was canceled. Cat Scratch was about three cats that inherited their owner's massive fortune. The premise got attention right off the bat, because who doesn't want to watch Millionaire Cats? The show had its original run from 2005 to 2007, but never gained enough traction. Gee, wonder why that was. Yep, you guessed it, this show ran alongside SpongeBob SquarePants, and initially that time slot played to its favor. Cat Scratch was fresh and felt different from SpongeBob. Well, even though some say the cats were just SpongeBob, Patrick, and Squidward in feline form. We don't buy the criticism, though. We do believe the show got an initial bump from its placement, but that was also their downfall. Most shows don't survive under the weight of the mighty sponge. Viewers start to change the channel after a bit, or the execs over in Nick try to switch the time slot. Which brings us to the obvious conclusion. Cat Scratch fell victim to this same poison pill. SpongeBob bringeth fame, and SpongeBob taketh fame away. Pretty soon, most shows scheduled next to it end up like SpongeBob's bank account. Sir, we are showing a balance of zero dollars and zero cents for both of your accounts. Oh. Don't worry, Invader Zen fans. We know how you all feel about this entry, and we just want you to know we understand. Here, we'll even help hand out supplies. Torches! Get your torches! Even the binger knows that Invader Zim is a one-of-a-kind show that feels like no other series out there. We don't want to dispute the indie fame it's garnered. However, we can't help but compare it just a little bit to SpongeBob. Let's face it, we've talked a lot about the comedy in our favorite underwater show. SpongeBob didn't invent that style of humor, but it popularized it. Invader Zim took that popular comedy choice and darkened it. When you look at the two through a macro lens, you see some similar traits. It's like Invader Zim is the edgy version. Sure, it's not wholly accurate, but it's hard to disprove that fact outright. Even then, Invader Zim is still finding fame outside the constraints of Nickelodeon. See, it doesn't owe all their popularity to SpongeBob, just a little bit. Can we just all put down the pitchforks and agree on that? Coconut Fred comes off like that one-time Bikini Bottom residents all pretended to have found SpongeBob. 
I'm ready, I'm ready. No, you ain't. It was such a clear ripoff that we're not even gonna pretend like it was an original idea. Coconut Fred Fruit Salad Island just sounds like a writer's room poorly attempting to compete with SpongeBob. The best part is, Warner Bros. was called out for ripping off SpongeBob. Critics lambasted the series, calling it loud and over the top. It was SpongeBob humor without the ability to tone it down. The creators of Coconut Fred didn't understand what made SpongeBob successful. They just tossed pretty colors on a tropical background and called it a day. It's a shame we even have to bring this one up. It was a total waste of time. The show was basically canceled from the get-go. There were two seasons in the loosest sense. They made 13 episodes of the show. Nine aired before the show went on a five-month hiatus. Then they released the final four as an abridged second season and pretended as if nothing happened. Boy, what a bummer to end on. Do you think we missed a show? Let us know below and share your thoughts on the video. You can subscribe and like this video to show your support for The Binger. Our subscribers know that we release daily, so you don't want to miss out.